and all of us. What a blessing this is going to be to hear from somebody that was a former camper. This guy came to this camp in June of 2000, so 15 years ago. It's the first year we had camp here. And his name is Michael Ory, and he has driven up here from Bogalusa, Louisiana, which is way out in southeast Louisiana. It's a long way from here. Mike was here with his family and his wife, Krista. Would y'all stand up, please? Yeah. Yeah. They have four daughters and one son. Michael is the son, and he is in the Packers right here. He's not going to love it. So we're glad he's here. He picked a good team to be on out here. Packers. But look. I'm not going to try to tell Michael's story. I'm going to let him do it. So let's give a round of warm welcome to Michael Marie. God bless you. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. Truly, it's an honor and a pleasure to be here with you on tonight. Uh, as Mr. Slack told you, I'm from Bogalusa, Louisiana, and that's down south. And I'm just so happy to be here with my wife and my five children. I didn't know my son was going to hop in the group, but I thank God for that. I thank God for y'all accepting me into the group as well. But I won't be before you long. I want to share something with you on tonight. It's about me. I came to this camp in 2000. I just found out that it was the first year they had the camp. Yeah, in this area in our bed. And I didn't know that, so I thank God I was a part of the first camp. But before I came to the camp, I was born and raised in Bogalus. My mom got pregnant with me. My mom was in law school. My mom already had four children. And my grandmother told my mom that she didn't have no room for a fifth child to raise while she continued her studies in college. So my mom was forced to put me into a foster care system. I grew up in a foster care system for the first few years of my life without knowing my family and friends. And one day, my godmother, who was my godmother today, she's my mom's friend, she came to me and she said, Silver, if you want to keep your son, I'll babysit it for you. While you finished school, and my godmother started to, to babysit when my mom finished school, she got me out of the foster care system. So at least I could be around my other brothers and sisters. And growing up in Bogalusa, we face a lot of challenges. Population of about 15,000 people. Crime as high as you can imagine. I know New Orleans and Shreveport and Baton Rouge be on the news a lot. But just four months ago in Bogalusa, four people was killed from four different incidents. And we have a high crime problem. And I grew up on the south side of Bogalusa. And when I was seven years old, after getting out of the foster care system, I was molested by some older women. And at the time, I didn't know the effect it had on my life, but it had a big effect on my life down the road. And the devil wanted me to keep this to myself. He didn't want me to share with nobody. He wanted me to feel like it's a personal problem. You deal with it yourself. Be human. You can fix yourself. Because he don't want you to reach out to God who can heal you or deliver you and set you free. Mm -hmm. So he tried to convince you that you can handle problems yourself. By nine years old, believe it or not, I was a full-fledged drug dealer at nine years old. Shame on the men that actually walked up from me because these were grown men. I was a little boy. I sold my brother's drugs, I went on the home, and I sold them. I didn't get all the money I was supposed to get, but I didn't know what I was doing, but nobody told me nothing different. And when I was in school, I got suspended at least 15 to 17 times a year in school. I got expelled from school twice. And uh, when I was in the fifth grade, I started smoking cigarettes, Newports. I smoked lots of Newports every day in fifth grade. 
Sixth grade, I started smoking some other stuff. Seventh grade, some other stuff. And my life was just headed downhill fast. I grew up with some guys. One guy, his name is Perry Lund. Perry got killed when he was 16. Me and him started selling drugs together. My other friend, Donna Ishman, we started together. He's dead right now. My other friend, Wendell Thompson, he's in Angola serving a life sentence right now. I just went to visit him last month. My other friend, uh, Darren Fields, he got out of prison in 2025. He's in a federal prison. Jamel Scott, he just got his time last month. He served 25 years in a federal prison. And these were the guys I hung with every day. These were my role models. These were my buddies, these are the guys that got me high, these are the guys that kept me supplied, these are the guys that had me doing a whole bunch of stuff that God didn't approve of. While in school, I tried to play football in Little League, but I got cut because of fighting. I went back out another, another year from Little League, I got cut again for fighting. I went out for sixth grade football, I got cut for fight. Seventh grade, I got cut for fight. Eighth grade, I got cut for fight. Ninth grade, I got cut for fight. Tenth grade, year, I got cut for fight. Eleventh grade, year, I got cut again for fight. I don't probably had over 500 fights that I can just try to remember. Because when we grew up, that's how we dealt with our problems. First, our my 11th grade year, I got a call from this girl. She told me she's pregnant. And I don't know who my dad is to this day. Uh, I really believe my mom made some poor choices um, that she's probably ashamed and embarrassed to admit. And she may not even know who my father is. I've never met him, I don't know his real name, I don't know nothing about him. And my mom did the best she could. My grandmother didn't like me, so I couldn't be around her too long because she needed to be or make my life miserable. And my grandfather died when I was younger, so I really didn't have that one person I needed to run to. My 11th grade year, the girl told me she was pregnant. I sat down and said, man, I said, I got to get myself together because this could be a golden opportunity to step up and, 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 and take my responsibility and do what I need to do. But I couldn't do it because I was limited in my resources. We was at high school one day. This was the summer, going into my senior year. They had a, a guy named Mr. Ben Showalter. He was a fellowship of Christian athlete state director. Mr. Ben Showalter uh, came to the Bogusa High School and they was talking with the principals and they were saying that uh, we're looking for some people to go to the FCA camp up in Shreveport. And uh, a little while later, they called me to the office and wanted to meet me and ask me, would I be interested in going to the Fellowship of Christian Athletes Camp? By this time, I never heard of FCA. I don't know what it stands for. I don't know nothing about it. But when they asked me about going to the Fellowship of Christian Athletes Camp, I could not understand to this day what they seen in the criminal to say, let's send him up there to represent the school. <laughs> and what, what was so amazing behind it, because the principal said, hey, you know, son, have y'all seen this photo? And I had just got out of jail, like, actually a month before the, the man came there. And um, I, we had got caught with some drugs and a gun and all bunch of stuff. And I was like, I don't know what in the world made them call me to the office to say, go represent the school at a Christian function. Now, believe it or not, I went to church every single Sunday. I only miss church three times to this day. So going to church is good, but that's not the key. The key is the truth. Taking that truth and applying it to your life. 
Because there's a lot of people that go to church faithfully, but they don't end up committed to God. So they told me to go on to the camp. I said, let's go. Came to the camp. I didn't have no intention on going to nothing here at the camp. I had my own mindset, and when I got in the room with my guys, I said, listen here, tonight we're going to have a good time. We're going to terrorize these dogs. We're going to go uh, sleep on the girls' room. We're going to go uh, hit them. We just, I had my mind messed up. And I told them, when we get back from church tonight, I said, this is what the plan is. And they were great. <laughs> Came to church that night, same form, and they had the worship service. I was sitting right over there, about where that young lady sitting over there, at the white shirt. I was sitting over there, and they said, that's you, babe. Don't turn around right here. Yeah. <laughs> she said, I'm going to talk about you. <laughs> Wave your hand up, baby. Put your hand. Not you right behind her. You. I was sitting right there. You in a great seat, baby. God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> and they was doing the praise and worship. I was over there in my own zone. Because I really didn't care, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to get back to the room. I, I really want to go home because I got to family doing. And while we was doing praise and worship, some white guy came up to me. Now, and I told Mr. Terry, I don't go for this him. I just don't remember, but it could have been. But some white guy came up and hugged me. And he hugged me tight. And I thought he was having fun because it, it was just it was too tight. <laughs> And he said, man, I love you. And God loved you too. And when he said that, I knew something was wrong with him. And I said, man, you don't even know me. How are you going to say that you love me? Praise and worship going on. He stayed over that week. He said, man, come up here with me. And he brought me up into this shack. Well, that's a great seat too, baby. Man, he brought me right there. And I sat with him. And I enjoyed the whole service. I really did. I actually started singing the songs. For real, I did lip singing and playing. And I really started singing the songs. <laughs> At the end of the message, that night, whoever was speaking, they said, if you want to accept Jesus Christ to be your personal Lord and Savior, this is your night. And I sat there and I kind of broke down a little bit, you know. Men have a tough time crying in public because we have so much pride. Mm. And sometimes you need to cry to release it out of your system. There's nothing wrong with crying. It don't make it hard, it don't make it soft. It makes you human. But we try to be superhuman, so as a man, we don't want to cry from a certain people. We don't want to cry from the women. We don't want to cry from the wrong people and all these things. Yeah. That's another trick of the other as well. But I sat there and I broke down. I was like, man, let me go up here. I said, man, I need to be in a relationship. Man, I came up that night. I accepted the Lord into my life right up there. Mm. And when I went back to the room that night, the guys were pumped up. I had told them what was going to go down tonight. <laughs> they was ready, they were excited, they was ready to go terrorize. And I said, everybody sit down, baby. <laughs> so we got a new schedule tonight. I said, everybody pull your Bibles out. And I had my first Bible study right there in the dorm. Went through the camp, man, I started meeting people, I really started to talk, I really made some great connections, some great, great, great relationships with people. Some of them guys I met, they followed me for the next four, four or five years. But when I got back to Bogalus, here's the text. See, we can come to out here the street for the way from family and friends. We can praise, we can worship, we can show our love and gratitude towards God. But God wants us to be sanctified. That means He wants to be set apart. And I want to encourage everyone in here don't be afraid to be here. There's no wrong with being a virgin as a young lady. Don't let anybody persuade you to think. That having sex and doing these things is popular. 
Just because your friend or your friend won't tell you what it's like to be pregnant without being married. They won't tell you what it's like to have an STD. They won't tell you some of these things that the world, and to be honest, and these things want you to see that stuff is popular. But I'm telling you today, God is looking for some serious people to make a commitment to Him and to trust Him. You're looking for the men to stand up today and be different. Don't worry about trying to sag your pants. Don't worry about trying to be cool. Don't worry about trying to fit in. But you know what he wants you to do? He actually wants you to stand out so that people can see you and they can see that you're different. So when I got back to Fort Lewis, the first thing I did when I got home, I had some drugs, I threw them away. I gave them guns away. And I told my mom that I'm with the Lord right now. Went to school. Man, they were so excited about the camp. They was happy about what happened. And the day the news called me, it's a paper that broke loose. And I brought my article with you from when I was there. I was on the front page of the paper that broke loose. And it said, Mama Jack turned over a new leaf. Running back right over the dozen. About face after life changed some experience. And they took a picture of me right there at the church. It said, New Jack Michael O'Reilly, broke loose a high running back, stands in front of Second Baptist Church, who was thrown out of a football game in Chalmette. Says, Fellowship of Christian Athletes Summer Camp had changed his temperament and attitude on life. That was been 15 years ago. When this article came out, all hell broke loose because the devil was mad that he lost. Him. I went back to Mobile Loose and we started with FCA at the school. People could not believe it. Listen to them, they thought, this boy is crazy. <laughs> Just got out of jail a month ago. Here you he is, up there trying to leave somebody talking about you with the Lord, man. And see, young people didn't read the scripture, but the Bible tells you that, that if any man be in Christ, that he's a new preacher. They forgot the Bible to that the old things have passed away. He said, Behold, all things become new. They didn't read them scriptures. And man, I'm telling you, that camp that night changed my life. My first year of completing football was my senior year. My first year of not only not being suspended, but I never went back to the office. Period. They didn't know out of that school no more. <laughs> and I actually joined the Bible Club. They didn't want me to come in. <laughs> and they stabbed us and all oh, that old I had to get a letter of recommendation to join the Bible Club because they was afraid they was getting the old white old ring. God blessed me to play football. He blessed me to go to Grandma. I played football for Grandma for four years. I got three degrees. I was in school only five years. I left there with associates, a bachelor's, and a master's degree in a five-year time period. While I was doing my internship, finishing my master's degree, I went home to Boca Lusa, and I ran for public office. I ran for city council. The guy I ran against was a 12, was a 16-year veteran, and I beat this man by so many votes. He wasn't even close at all. I beat him. I like. I think 800 votes, and they elected me to the city council. Now, let me tell you how good God is. When you're the city councilman, they have a city council president. The city council president is the second in charge to the mayor. And I was elected by my peers at 22. Well, 23, I was sworn in. I was elected at 22, sworn in at 23. And I became city council president. Our mayor got into some corruption problems. And I had to take over the city. Oh, that's so real. <laughs> Run the city. <laughs> and, and, and listen, I got arrested nine times before the age of 16. I was sent off plenty of times. I spent summers away from my family in juvenile detention center doing these time spans and, and, and working like a dog. And I mean, I had some. 
And them same police officers who arrested me, I had opportunity to sign that check for three months. <laughs> Wasn't that beautiful to see that check and see it the bottom of it? Michael Oakley. And I say office for eight years, 2012, 2013, God told me, it's time to preach. I preached my first sermon in January of 2013. I started pastoring in last year. We started out with seven members, me, my wife, and my five kids <laughs> in my living room. <laughs> and right now I'm in the process of raising money to build our own church for God that listening with close to 300 members in one year. So, here's what I want to leave on your mind tonight. God want you to be different. I had a choice to make when I left the FCA camp. To act like I was saved in front of my church family and then go with my friends and go out and drink, go out and party, go do the things of the world ought to be different. And I chose to be different. I didn't know it was the first year of camp, but whatever the mission was, whatever the goal was, it worked. Because God had used me not only to spark the people in my city, but even when I was in college. And everywhere I go, I tell people about Jesus. Because when I look at my friends right now, it's a good chance that they get a chance to make it to him because they, they didn't know Jesus as a personal savior. And my boy Perry Lundin, he was killed and the guy stood on top of him and just shot him. Until he, until he stopped talking. I was standing right there and he looked at me and pointed the gun in my face and told me that if I moved, because I had it out of my pocket, he said if I moved, he was going to shoot me. And I'm just telling you, I know I can be dead tonight. I could be sitting on the side of my best friend, Dan Fields, who's serving 20 years since now. But for some reason, God chose me to be here. And I want you to get this tonight. That if you're going, if you're going to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, and trust him. Don't worry about how you feel, because all my family members don't like me right now. Because of the decision I made to follow Christ. And if you ever decide to follow Christ, you're going to know some, some of your family members and some of your friends will not support your decision. And that's why the Bible tells you that God be for you. Who can be against you? And I want y'all campus to really understand that God is serious and he's for real and he loves all of us. But he wants you to trust him. And I'm telling you tonight, if you trust Jesus, if you turn from your wicked ways and if you trust him, God will turn your whole life around. I grew up poor, I grew up hungry, I grew up struggling, and my mom never owned the house, my mom never owned the vehicle. And man, God can bless me to own my house. Just bought my wife a brand new truck on our anniversary two weeks ago. I, I mean, man, God is awesome. And beyond the financial blessing, you know what I got? I got peace. Hmm. So even when I'm broke, you'll never know, but I got peace. I got a jar so when I should be crying or found up, I can smile. And I got love. So now I can hug somebody and say, I love you. Just like somebody told me, and I don't even have to know them. But because the love of God is going through my veins, it makes me love the people I see every day. I challenge all you in this room tonight to trust God. I challenge all you in this room like, to be different. Look beyond your past, look beyond your circumstances, 
Put your faith in God. Because fear means to put your faith in the devil. Don't be afraid of nothing. If you got a dream, go after it. Don't let nobody stop you. If they not walk in the direction you're going in, change your direction. Change your friendship. You need to be going with the Lord. If people don't want to follow you with him, that's fine. God bless you. I love you, but we can't walk together. Because I'm trying to go somewhere. So again, I thank God for FCA. I thank God for this camp. Because this camp changed my life. God used this vessel, this tool, to change my life. And I can stand up here boldly and tell the world, I love God. And he loved me. And because of that, I can love my friends. I can love my enemies. The people that harm me, the, the people that don't all those terrible things to me, when I was young, I'm in the process of forgiving all of them. And with the Lord, you can make it. I thank God for y'all time. I thank God for y'all allowing me to be here. And no matter what you do, put God first.